everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Urban Gardener. Today, we get to harvest garlic. So what was it, about November, beginning of November, I believe, as it started getting cool, I came out here to the alleyway garden plot and planted out garlic cloves. Now, garlic has a nice long growing season and likes to grow through the cold of the winter time. I did an episode about that. I put a night card above. It's now time for us to take that garlic out of the ground. It's mid-June, I think they're ready. Not sure exactly what we're gonna get. I did plant out a couple of varieties there, one that I got from my last harvest last year, and a different local type of uh, garlic that I got at, a, at the local farmer's market. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what to expect. We're gonna dig them out, we'll see what we're gonna do. First, I'm gonna kinda weed this out a little bit, get it cleared up, then we'll get down, we'll pull those garlic out. Ain't gonna get everything. And I featured that uh, lamb's tail in the uh, last episode in our garden tour. And one of the things I talked about is how prolific and invasive it can be. I'm sure that at one point in time, a piece of it got pulled off during some weeding or something like that and fell right over here. And it just decided I like that spot. I'm gonna go ahead and grow here too. We probably will not let it stay there as I'm gonna prepare this spot here for I believe some melons and stuff like that that I still got left to do. Anyways, here's our garlic. Now, as you can tell, a lot of the uh, early leaves on it have died back. We still got some green on top. So it's kind of a good sign that your uh, garlic is uh, probably about ready. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our garden fork and we're gonna go around and we're gonna loosen this up all around the side there so that we can pull them out nice and easy. This back or so maybe five or six inches outside of the stalk of the plants. Fork in. Loosen up that soil. All right, so I loosened up some of the soil around the outer edge of the uh, garlic. So let's get down there and we'll take out some of those garlic around the outer edge and we'll kind of loosen it up as we go into the middle there. Let's dig around here, and be real gentle. I got another smaller, kind of get around. Smell that, that's nice. All right. So there's one of them here. Here. It's not 
себя. As you start digging up this garlic, it sure starts to get everything smelling. You can smell the garlic already in the air. In there a little bit deep. Whoa, look at the size of that one. And it's got a side bulb off of it. That's a nice size garlic bulb there. All right. This is another, uh, I believe the type of garlic that I grew from last season. I put it in this space here just to kind of see how well it would do. This is a lot more rockier and a lot more clay. So I wanted to kind of test out how well the bulbs would grow in a tougher soil. So let's see if we can't break that up and get in there and get those out. too bad. A nice little baby one. So yeah, even though it's really rocky and tough soil, I mean, those garlic seem to do pretty well in there as well. Looks like we got a pretty good harvest this season.
right, we ended up with a really great garlic harvest. Did want to mention some other things too real quick. Um, today I picked a kind of overcast day to pick the garlic. If you have to pick it and it's a really sunny day, make sure your bare garlic that's just come out of the ground doesn't come in contact with direct sunlight. It's just not good for the garlic before it gets cured. Now curing, I'm gonna take this basket of this garlic and I'm gonna take it into my shed, which is an outdoor shed there with the, with the carport. And I'm gonna let it sit in there for a few weeks and um, it'll dry up, get cured. No need to wash it or anything like that as well. We'll just stick it in there, put it away for a little while, and then after a while it'll be cured and ready to go. All right, so all right, so one of the other things I want to talk about today on this episode is strawberries. Now, they're one I have several beds of them around the home garden here. I'm going to go through and show you those, and then we'll talk a little bit about runners. All right, we got our back patio strawberry bed here in our above ground raised bed container. In here. We've got plenty of strawberries. We've been harvesting off of this container here for the last couple of weeks. Let me get in, take out a bunch more here in just a little bit. But I wanted to take you down to the community garden. Down at the community garden real quick. Um, since how we're talking about strawberries, just wanted to kind of show off some strawberries growing down here. Plenty of them. I think I come through here, pick these out about every other day, and every time I come back, there's probably a bas couple baskets more. It's a good thing I really like strawberries. So, yeah, I'm getting down in there real low too. And I really dig around. When you're going through a strawberry patch like this, you gotta even go at it from one side and then come around, go at it from this side, and then go and come around and go at it from that side. And I'll guarantee you each time you're gonna find strawberries you didn't even see the first time from the other direction. As you can see, strawberries are very prolific. They will run and send runners to go find new places to grow. And these guys are heading out a long concrete trip to nowhere. I might just come down and pin those back and see if we can't just uh, get some new plants for somewhere else. So look at this strawberry patch here. Our neighbor's garden plot. Just full of strawberries. I don't know if this one's been picked very much. Look at that. Yeah, I don't think these have been picked through very much at all. There's some that are just... That's another thing too, you know, if you want your strawberries to grow, pick them. They will keep growing. They will grow more. And as I've noticed, as you start picking the first ones as well, the ones that start coming up subsequently are bigger and sweeter, it seems, when they put some more energy into growing them. All right, aside from our container strawberries that we have on our... Uh, patio bed. I did plant out the strawberries here in our alleyway right on the corner. Figure they're the most resilient just in case anything happened. They should be able to grow back just fine. But um, these strawberries here are actually a different variety than the ones over on the uh, patio. Um, these ones uh, bloom uh, later and produce fruit later than the others. And as you can see, I believe down here, 
We're just finally starting to get some flowers and fruits coming. So yeah. These ones are really nice strawberries. Can't wait for them to get going. Well, we do have plenty of strawberries already from the community garden to um, our back patio. I have some also out in the front yard area. All right. Well, real quick update. Uh, I did an episode on this. I put a little art card above um, about pests and did this trap with a uh, beer. It's basically a uh, couple of yogurt containers inside each other, one with holes at the bottom. That way you can kind of filter out the slugs it's supposed to trap. Um, it's worked for, uh, I've caught several, several slugs, but my problem ultimately is, is that I think that, you know, like a small trap like this when I'm dealing with slugs is really, really not going to work as well when I've just got so many of them. I mean, we can just pull up any one of these rocks and probably find tons of slugs and whatnot, but, um, does work. But, uh, yeah, I do have to say that, uh, as far as a review on the idea, if you're dealing with as many slugs as I am, and they have a lot of hiding spaces and places to uh, produce babies and all that sort of stuff, you, I, you would have to do a lot of those traps in order to uh, uh, probably put a dent into the slug situation. So I'll be working on different solutions as far as that goes, but it does actually attract some slugs and traps them, so I can say that it does work to a, a smaller extent. Okay, and back to the strawberries. As you can tell, look at all them runners. So what we got here is a bunch of strawberry runners running off of the main plants. Now they are off, they're trying to find uh, spaces here to fill out this area, which is ultimately what I'm going to be looking for. So one of the things you can do is that the runners produce a little plant that's going to come off and at the bottom of it, when it hits just the right spot, it's going to form roots and set itself into the ground. It also will continue to set runners and put out another plant and another plant and continue to find itself around and that's how strawberries spread themselves around. Now, one of the things you can do in this case if I'm trying to fill out this area here I can take them and I can move these runners and put them in a specific spot I want them in. And I can just pretty much lay them there and it will form roots it will set itself in and a new strawberry plant will start itself from there the next runner will probably find another spot there. Now it's probably fine just to set it there like that, but one of the things I like to do is I also got these little garden stakes. Okay, give me one second, I'll show you how I put these together. So what you need is some wire snips, some paper clips. So what you're gonna do is around the inside curl, cut the outside, so see where they hook together, comes off. Just basically created yourself some little garden stakes. Okay, so you take these garden stakes and you just kind of put it around, put it down, not too hard. You don't want to really damage the stem or anything, but make sure it stays right there in that spot. Okay, now another thing too is 
a lot of these uh, runners I might not need. Some of them I might want to take into another part of my garden or something too. So one of the things I can do is I can pick out a runner, like this one here actually. It's got itself some nice roots already. And I could take one of these. Make sure it's packed in nice and tight. Give it a little spot. Set the roots right in there. Take one of our little garden stakes. All right, a little more close-up look real quick. See that little root node there? Set that right down in there. Press it into the soil. Right where that neck is. Push that garden stick. Right in there. Press it into the container. Make sure the soil is all around the roots there. When those roots establish themselves in there, it'll be nice and strong and it'll hold itself into the cup very well. You'll have a new plant at that point in time. Cut it off from the mother plant. Take it to another part of the garden. Okay. One of the other things too is that if you don't need any runners or you don't need them spreading themselves around at all, cut them off. Take them off. Cut them out of there. It'll help the plant put more of its energy into the rest of its production. Okay. Now, this one though, which it's already set itself in pretty well. This one out. Try to loosen those roots right out nicely. And I picked up this fun little bag at the dollar store, so I thought it would be kind of neat to grow some strawberries out of it. Basically transplant that root system right in there. Bring it in nice. Take one of our little stakes. Pop it in there. Hold it down.
that's delicious. And as we're heading into summer now, it's really, really nice to have gotten off to a couple of really great harvests. Strawberries are growing great. Garlic's up out of the ground now. We've got so many more things to look forward to growing out of our gardens. Everything smells and looks wonderful, tastes great. I want to thank you all so much for coming along with me today. If you can, hit the like button. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, hit me up in the comment section below. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'll see you again on The Urban Gardener. been since what like they did okay let's try this again let's try it one more time bug